Hello and welcome to the AI Extravaganza Week 16 race at the Sonoma Motorsports Park. Right now it's going to be Mr. Rick Jackson on the pole, his first ever pole at a road course in his 18 years of NORL racing. John Batista, the sweepster of last year, is third. We've got Mr. Tim McDonald way in the back of ninth position. Did not have the best qualifying run of all time, but look for him to be a factor by race's end. Everybody's drank their wine and danced to their favorite Hollywood dance and is willing to try to win this event because a lot of the people need it. Brad, 11th in points. JB, 12th in points. Zach Michael, front row starter, 13th in points. Tony Pizarro, road ringer, 14th in points. Johnny Reed Foley, 16th in points. Dave Miller, not very good at road courses. Had a good top 10 qualifying, is 15th in points. All of these guys need a good run today to make the chase come Las Vegas. So here is our full official starting lineup, sponsored by Napa Valley. Rick Jackson with the pretty damn cool race suit on the pole. Zach Michael, Coca-Cola, Home Depot, Monte Carlo, second. John Batista, saving lives with his lifesaver's rainbow car. Inspired by, we will remember, Ernie Irvin, 39, third. Fourth, Mark, Matt Raboyne Martin, Viper, fourth, Valvoline. Fifth, eight up band Scott Jackson, full black Monte Carlo. Sixth, Coca Cola, big red Foley. Seventh, cigarette Virginia blend Chevrolet QSM Dave Miller. Eighth, most laps led on the season Nos Energy Ryan Hoiser. Ninth, Road Ringer himself, second on the all-time road course win list, Tim McDonnell. Tenth, former road racer winner himself, John Tharp. Dalton Lucas with a masterful uh, qualifying run, eleventh. Craig Lee Trojan, twelfth. Bob Marley Ken, thirteenth, Chevrolet Impala. 14th, Randy. Zach Miller on the 15th spot. 16th, Tony, the Red Sox Fenway, Frank Pizarro. 17th, Piper, Bill Workheiser, Cherokee 6, Airplane. David Courtney, Wrangler, Dodge. Mark Guthrie, Blue. Walt Flowers, living the high life in his last season in NRL competition. Tony Long, Ampio, Fusion. Dan Johnston, Alex Craps are way in the back starting today. Last week's winner, Donald Stewart. Points leader, Matthew Dominique. Alan Nesfeder, Jonathan Scrappings, Christian Tufflings, Ben Lyman-Pierre, Scott Drake, Michael Hanson, Mello Aaron Yellow, Stephen Spears, Hell Woman Thing, Rob Scarberry, STP, Charneski, his replacement, Tyler Scott, Thank you. 
Chris Wood missed the field, including for David Baldinger, Kevin Corbett, Broderick Whitman, Scott Deutsch, Alex Stella, Jackson Thatcher, Lowe's, and Walt Lovers. Our race weather tonight will be 82 degrees, 6 mile an hour wind to the east, track temperature of 100 and one. Now, Tony, I think you're making up the track temperature just from the sound of your voice. <laughs> well, I shouldn't have said 100, <laughs> but I had to roll with it. Alright, let me close the window here. Well, today's race will be contested on 1.99 mile, what is it, a 12-turn uh, road course? 12 turns, 1.99999999 miles. I don't think there's that many nines. There's always enough nines. We got 110 laps making up the event. Speaking of the number nine, number 99 David Baldinger failed to make the show. Number nine Jacob Stump failed to make the show. There's a lot of nines missing in the show. However, the 39 with a pretty good qualifying effort, starting there, was a third or fourth? I forgot which side is the inside and the outside here. You're starting third because Rick somehow got the pole. All right, we are. Looking I don't know. I think we got some. We got some fast cars starting pretty far back in the field. I wouldn't count out that 04 and the 12 for damn sure. The 04 and the 12 are way back, but it looks like they are. Ready to pounce. Jimmy Stevens has had some good runs here as well. Let's see if he can scoop. And the pace car comes in. Looks like we are having some trouble lining up. Here we go. Oh, we have contact before the green. Pace car is in. Get ready. Daryl Waltrip would say, boogity, 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 let's go, 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 racing. Three wide on the start, that probably will get somebody a penalty. Somebody is not lining up correctly. Zach Michael is going to take the point. Rick Jackson has maintained his second, and John Batista and Matt Raboyne come into that sharp corner. Very, 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 very side by side. Yeah, getting a good jump out of the first couple of corners is going to let that 20 car get way out of it. As you see, the 88 nearly hit the dang tires out there off the four. I think the 88 might have spun. Right now, it is John Batista third, Rick Jackson second, Zach Michael right now in the lead. Caution flag is out. Well, sometimes you have the cars that bunched up, it's hard to get going without sending somebody off. Scott Jackson and Matt Raboyne race side by side. Coming out of turn 12. Lots of craziness on the first lap, starting with the three wide madness coming to the green flag. I feel like pit strategy could prove to be rather important here on the road course, especially with the way cautions can fall. Pitting at the wrong time and then getting a bad yellow can really put you out, and it looks like, speaking of out, that 85 is tore up. That 85 is tore up. Looks like something may have, might have happened with Dalton Lucas back on the first half of the racetrack. Let's see. And it does look like the 85's gone to the garage. This day is probably over. A lot of dirt and debris flying there at 4A. Oh yeah, we had a car around. 
But that didn't look like it had anything to do with it. 88's around, they all get around him. Don't tell me he's going to get hooked into the wall here through the S's, is he? It would appear that Oh, we got guys. Oh, some. These guys are so far off the track. Oh, yeah. Nothing William Tex-Berry can do about that. Other than just. No, that's. The danger of qualifying near the back of the field is you end up in all that mess. You see guys going to be for a and then the real problem is you don't have room for four wide. They've got to be off on the freaking dirt to go four wide down there. And then right next to the windmill or whatever that's called. It's called a Ferris wheel there, Tony. Yes. I'll tell you what, the 11 was lucky he didn't get hooked too in that because the 85 was right on him. Let's take a look at what happened to Mr. Dalton Lucas, who appears to be okay, despite getting spun. Yeah, fr from that first shot, I'd almost guess that he got wide and got himself spun around. I'm wondering if the yellow was already out before we had the second incident. Problem is, he's just off the pace on the start. Got a really good qualifying run, but he doesn't seem to be able to... I, I don't, guys think, I don't think they got all the debris off them tires. Yeah, he's off in the dirt. That's not going to help him. He gets into the corner. He's already wide in the dirt. Gets nerfed out wide. And then just gets spun across the track. And I bet the yellow was out right there. Even before we rode off the 85 car. Well, right now it's going to be Zach Michael first. Rick Jackson second. John Batista third, Matt Raboyne fourth, Scott Jackson fifth, Ryan sixth, Dave Miller seventh, Johnny Reed Foley, Tim McDonald, and John Tharp rounding out the top ten. Yeah, we got a couple of surprising cars up there at the front, at least surprising to me. No surprise though the Muslims stay out. It's way too early. He ain't gonna get anything pitting here on lap three. Nah, there's no strategy involved at this point. Hopefully we'll have a less stacked restart with the single file. Yep, lights are out. Zach Michael leading the field. Yeah, we keep getting contact there at, at uh, 11 coming to the green, don't we? They get a little too stacked up. That might be the fault of the pace car going too slow. Yes, it, it, it could easily be fixed if somebody just made it so the pace car exited on the right. Hmm. Go green flag, green, green, green. Michael pulls out ahead. John Batista and Rick Jackson race side by side. With Matt Raboyne trying to take advantage and follow one of them. Yeah, you really got to get that pass done before you get to three. Otherwise, you're really offline. But maybe you can hold out there. Looks like he will, actually. If you can keep with him to four, you might get him, but you just can't get a runoff of the top end of three there on the inside like that. You need the track to roll out into. Right now, Scott Jackson and Ryan Hoiser trying to stay into that top five. Meanwhile, Tim McDonald rolls his way around Johnny Reed Foley with Tony Pizarro right behind. I was going to say, that 12 car is coming up through the field pretty quick. Looks like he'll probably make that 18 car his next victim here in about two corners. Oh, he even got him there. That's a hell of a move around the outside. Foley's having a lot of handling trouble on the initial laps of the race. Honestly, I think it's because he didn't take the mirror down this time. Mirror is always important, as Donnie Dobbs has always told us during his television podcasts. Mirror. Well, as yes, you may remember, a few years back, running the modified side of Watkins Glen, one of the best road course races that 18 car ever had. The trick was, about the time the 22 got, well, actually I think it was 31 at that time, got to his bumper, he just took the damn mirror down. Can't intimidate me if I can't see you. So many cars are so close together. Got a battle for second way ahead. That's what's stacking up the field is that battle for second. Zach Michael is pulled away. Matt yeah, Miller. I hate to say it, but I think I think we're gonna see this 44 start to fade through the field. But 
can get some good single lap pace, but I don't know if they've hit for the race setup. They usually have a little bit of trouble with that. Jackson's never been a road ringer, unlike his cousin Scott, who has won two NRL road events. Granted, it's been a while since he's won any. Oh! Oh! Trouble! Big trouble! Unfortunately, on the tape delay, I've just now seen the 39 get turned off of 11. Are we still green? Well, we won't be now. The sweeper of last year has been dumped. He's been... Oh! Huge jam up. Huge jack up. Whatever you want to call it, it's huge. Oh, and that is a lot of damage. All it took is one crash for people to let off, and everyone ended up at the same part of the course at once. Causing another crash. Craig Lee's car, very destroyed. Yeah, I think he was in two of those there. He collected the 39 after the spin and then was in the uh, post-race, post-race, post-yellow checkup. Yeah, a lot of damage to that in the 32 car. And that's going to drop the 39 to the back of the field. It'll be interesting to see if he can come back from that. I think 138 just wheel hopped on in there and just tagged him, or now just got such a good run off that he just drove through him. And right after that, they were just three wide trying to get by the crash and came to the finish line too close. Yeah, it makes me wonder if there should be uh, some tires or a safer barrier there. That's a hell of a concrete wall to hit. Oh, that's a shame for John Batista, though. It's so hard to pass at this racetrack to lose all those spots. Well, I would argue it's only hard to pass. It's only hard to pass if you're not a boatload faster. I, I think he's going to eat up a good chunk of the field. As long as that car ain't too hurt. I think he's a lot better off than Craig Lee is. Craig's the oh, that, that 101 and that 32, I'll, I'll be surprised if they uh, get back going. Yeah, it looks like Adam and uh, Mark just got too close there. Good job by everybody to slow down, though. Shockingly, Ben got through it with just a little bit of damage. I, with the kind of luck he's had, I didn't expect to see him rolling about 15 times. I suspect with that much damage on some of these cars, we're bound to see some pit stops here. I wouldn't be shocked if 39 comes in to get new tires after that. It would appear that John Batista is in the pits, as well as Craig Lee, Adam Crapser, Mark Gutherman, and Johnston. Jamie's going to be all the way back. Well... If one of your favorite things in life is passing cars, it's a good day to be John Batista. Yes, he is going to have a whale of a time back there. Emphasize on whale. I suspect they got everything cleaned up, so the lights should go out near the top of the hill here. We'll probably get a restart. Oh, nope, lights are already out. Coming to the flag, it's going to be Zach Michael, Matt Reboyne, Rick Jackson. Uh, just go off of your screen for a second. I clicked the wrong button. Oh, lap 60! Okay, I, well, at least we know he'll still be in the race at lap 60. <laughs> Technical difficulties! Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> this the wrong button, Blues. Are you, uh, are you having that same problem I've been having, where, uh, your taskbar sometimes stays at the bottom of the window, and if you click it, it crashes your game? No, but I crashed it on purpose because if I went back on it, there, it would have been more visible. So I'm going to start it again. Tony, you need to disable Cortana. Probably. And clean up your desktop, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Most of those programs I don't use, so it's fine. You have random bitmaps and JPEGs. We also need to get you the logo remover for this damn uh, menu screen. Press Alt-Z to use GeForce Experience in-game overlay. We're, 
we're on what, like lap eight? Alright, coming to the flag, it's Zach Michael, Matt Raboy, and Rick Jackson. I did, I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> Damn it. And this is why the NRL on Twitch will not be winning an Emmy. <laughs> Okay, okay, here we are. <laughs> Alright, let me look at the button I'm pressing this time. Okay, it's gonna be Zach Michael, Matt Ramoy, Rick Jackson, Scott Jackson, Tim McDonald, Tony Pizarro, Dave Miller, Johnny Reed Foley, John Tharp, and Ryan Hoiser. Coming to the flag. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see if, if we can get a green flag run going. I'll be curious to see how quickly that 39 comes through the field. Also be curious to see how the 44 holds on. Green flag, green, green, green. Matt Raboyne makes a little bit of a jump run here. But as you can see, Zach Michael's just a bit too strong coming out of some of the corners is Tim McDonald. Yeah, that was a hell of an outside move. That's how you do it on those restarts. As long as you can beat him to three. Tim McDonald knows how to pass here. He just passed Luke Jackson successfully. Meanwhile, here's Tony Bizarro and Scott Jackson battling for the fifth. I mean, not only did that 22 pass Rick Jackson, passed Scott Jackson the same two corners. Pizarro's coming right through him too. Pizarro knows exactly what to do with these kinds of racetracks. If there's any advantage he has to getting in this chase, it's here. It is quite enjoyable for our first uh, first road course race of the year. I think we got what three or four more lined up for the year. Uh, three more, I believe. If I remember correctly. And then we have Lime Rock, and Charlotte Roads. And One who could forget the Glen. There's a rumor There's a rumor the officials are looking at maybe running the boot for that race. There's a lot of rumors going around. There was some smoke there at uh, turn 11. What happened back there? Uh, I don't know. Everybody is still in a line, so it doesn't look like whatever happened was that big of a deal. I'm noticing on this start the 20 hasn't gotten away like he did on the last couple. Yeah, it looks like Matt is a lot stronger nowadays on the side of the, the race. Oh, we got guys off in the dirt off of two, yeesh. Whoa. As you can tell, it's mayhem for John Batista. <laughs> As John I mean, this, this is this situation where you just got picked through. Whoa, look at that! Is that the 48 cutting through four? That's the only way he knows how to pass here. Well, you gotta be careful. Officials will black flag you eventually for that. This is this is giving some passing opportunities to these people at the back. They're trying to get back through. This is a very interesting race back here, but we will go back to the front. Right now, it's Bizarro McDonald looking to possibly get by Matt Ramon. It's getting crazy. It's getting amped. It's getting frightening. It's getting crazy. Is it actually frightening? Is that the word you would use? Are you scared? What's amazing is we have this much action, we're only on lap 10. We've heard some complaints about our onboard cameras. I think more of the complaints were also about the weird drone camera. Oh, up and run, up and run.
let's be fair, they don't have any idea how to count corners in California, apparently, because I think there's actually more than 12 corners here. There very well could be. There is 1A, 2A, 3A, and 5A. Because by my count, there's actually 16 corners. <laughs> I tell you what, what I'm noticing, that 44 is a roadblock. He's caused a lot of jam ups. He's not as fit as he used to be. Plus, he was never a roadrunner anyway. As Johnny McFoley and Ryan Hoiser race side by side. Now, certainly not a road ringer, but definitely, uh, definitely knew what he was doing and could bring home a nice, consistent finish almost every day that we hit one of these places. It's only a matter of time he gets them, but the outside at 11, I don't know if that'll ever work. I don't know, he's making it look No, if you hang out there though, you're going to get him at 12. Well, he made a bold move, but it worked out. It's a real shame my feed's on like a 15 second delay. If only we were on Mixer or YouTube. Yes, YouTube. Yeah, the gap's staying about the same there between the leader and the group chasing him. All four of these cars are pretty fast, but I think the two behind these two are just a little bit faster, but not fast enough to make any equipment. They're all being efficient. Now, unfortunately, my scoring screen has frozen, but uh, how far off the back are the uh, back markers in this pack? We've been green, what, about four laps? That's an awful lot of time to have already lost. Let's take another quick look at Mr. John Batista. Trying to get the I tell you what, if he has the kind of day that he could have, that uh, position chart for the day is going to look like a roller coaster. To not use the uh, use the equipment up trying to get through this pack. So you use the equipment up, it ain't gonna matter if you get to the front or not. Even if you get there, you ain't gonna have anything. So you just kind of gotta hope strategy goes your way, and you can pick these guys off where you can. side of the guy, but if you can't get the power down off the corner, you ain't going to finish that pass. Whoa, looks like we have some trouble here. Whoa. Oh, man, it looked like Tim McDonald maybe tried to make a move on Matt Boyne there. Might have been a bad decision as Pizarro tries to take advantage. Well, that's always the danger when you're in a pack like that, but you can't just sit there and ride. You ain't going to go anywhere, so. And sometimes getting past is the best thing that can happen. That guy might be uh, a little better at moving the guy in front of you, and then you both get through. Whoa, Pizarro looks underneath the boy. 
a second. Can he make the pass going to that sharp corner? I don't think he can do it. We'll say the gap between uh, first and second has come down a little bit over the last few laps. It was up to a second. We're back to about uh, two thirds to a half. I'm wondering if that, wondering if that 20 is starting to fade. The 20 hasn't had really hardly anyone on his bumper, but he's had people within a second the whole time. A lot of good racing here. Thirty-eight slowly going to creep into this picture too at this rate. I don't know. He's been at the same distance for a little bit. He's actually falling back in time. I don't know, I think if these four get racing, you'll see that gap disappear pretty damn quick. I mean, we got side by side for second and third there at seven, and look at how much the 20 jumped out ahead. Yeah, that's all it takes. It's so hard to pass. Really hard Ooh, a little nudge. I think, I think if we stay green for an extended period here, what's going to really play in is traffic. Especially as, as tires start to wear these guys off the back of the field, they're going to start looking like they're moving in slow motion. Oh. I do not believe what I just saw. Matt Raboyne into the dirt, into the dirt. That oh! might be the end of the race for the 12 car. That was some heavy contact into those tires. I don't know. He's still going. He's still going. Usually you don't get away with that. Are we still green? I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I just know Dave Miller and Rick Jackson are trying to pass each other after that madness. Well, that was frightening. Still haven't seen any flags or lights. I don't know if we're green or not. I think Rick Jackson might think we're under yellow, but it looks like everyone else is going full speed. We are under yellow. Caution is out. Caution is out. It's kind of a lucky break that you got a yellow for that. Yeah, and the good news is it looks like I'm still pulling away a little bit, so I don't know if I hit it that hard. Yeah, it really surprises me. In, in the past, when I've hit tires like that, it's usually game over instantly, kind of like you saw happen to the 85. Wow. Now well, we're under a third yellow. Now, line. before the internet gets going on this, the officials may need to make a ruling on that. Because that, sure as heck, looked like an intentional move back across the track. In fact, some commentators may say that that was a disgusting act. Yes, Joe Buck is looking at this race very vividly and thinking and act. Meanwhile, Tim McDonald takes second. It's pretty easy to pass the two cars ahead of you when they wipe each other out like that. A little bump at the top of three and just hooked him. And he just keeps his foot on it, goes full Baja truck and just plows into him. Very lucky not to get collected by somebody else coming through there, too. I'm not sure. I think he would have been even more thankful if the yellow hadn't come out. That would have really pushed everybody back behind him. Just... Oh! I suppose that's a good point. It was a thought I always had in these races. The yellow was nice to relax, but if there was not immediate pressure on your bumper, you didn't really want to see it unless it was going to end the race. He was just in that sand and he couldn't really stop. Because he was going over bumps half the time and wasn't even on the Yeah, track. but if this was F1, that's a five second penalty at the least. This will be the one that gets to see everything. Thirty-eight did a good job not to T-bone him. That would have been real ugly. It's 
real hard to go side by side through those S's. No question about it. But it would appear that being the leader is the safest place to be because Zach. Is it has the, been so far. Zach is not the fastest car on the track, but he's out of the least trouble and in the least precarious position. As we see Ramoyne pit as Pizarro stays out. Yeah, I'm surprised that uh, both of them aren't coming in, but all that dirt on the tires and Baja bugging the thing, you might want to make sure you didn't break anything. Uh, we're going to pause for a second. Tim, I want you to see something on the right, and I want you to figure out why that's a truck. That's a truck suspended by a crane, Tony. Okay. Just wanted to know. You hadn't even paused yet, and I already knew what it was. <laughs> If you want a story about why I know what that is, it's because I put it in my track exactly the same way, because it was there in real life. Well, alright. It looks like Matt's going to repair his damage going to the back of the field, just like John Batista. Well, I was optimistic for Batista early on, but he has not made the progress I would have expected, so... Don't know how well it's going to work out here, either. Eight positions ain't many. Except for the people that were 30 seconds off the back four laps into a run. Meanwhile, Craig Lee is still 25th despite his horrifying damage. Yeah, it surprises me that that car is even holding together. Coming to the flag, it'll be Zach Michael, Tim McDonald, Scott Jackson, Tony P Pizarro, Dave Miller, Ryan Hoiser, Matt Raboyne, Rick Jackson, Johnny Reed Foley, and Matthew Dominic. How the hell do you spell that name? What, what consonants and vowels make the <laughs> sound? With lots of letters and vowels and consonants. Not to be confused with continents. My favorite continent is A. The joke being it is neither a continent nor a consonant. Coming to the green flag as we see the drag strip. Can anybody pass Zach Michael? This is lack of traffic just too strong for anybody. Here we go, coming to the green flag. Go, 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 go! Everything's happening now. Right, the top four look to be breaking away just a tiny bit. As we see Dave Miller and Ryan Hoiser, teammates, trying to fight for that fifth position. I mean, these restarts are when you really need to go. Everybody's bunched up, you can get a couple of spots real easy. Once we get a few laps in, it starts getting harder to get two-for-ones. Gaps start opening up, and then you got a lot of room to make up. Yeah, we got some surprising faces up in the, uh, just outside the top ten. Even in the top ten. It's taking Alex Krabser a long time to get to the front, but he's, he's getting closer. So we have a well, each pass he makes is getting harder and harder as he goes forward. You're just getting to the better and better cars to get to the front. Sometimes things aren't as easy as you think they should be. No, that Dodge Man Dodge is looking pretty slow right now. As we see Tim McDonald right behind, so Zach Michael and Scott Jackson trying to hold off Bizarro for the third spot. Jackson knows how strong Bizarro is at these courses. He wants to be able to take the lead soon and hold off everybody. Honestly, a little surprised, uh, with the exception of turn four there, there's very little curb getting used. There was a lot of talk that the curb would damage the race car if they hit it, so they decided not to use the curb. I think there were also some concerns from teams that would unload the car and flip the damn thing on its lid, but... Yes, John Batista and Johnny Ray Foley have talked about that, and they have said that they will not use the curb. Immediately hits the curb. 
actually did a whale of a job blowing off Bizarro and the SSD. I don't know, I think it was more of a porpoise of a job. One thing the leader does have to deal with, he's the first one to see all that dust from the previous lap. Well, the good news is, when it's that light of dust, you usually know there ain't nothing that you need to worry about. It's that thick dust you can't see through that you go, uh-oh, what's in here? It's always been a problem at this track, too. I don't know, there's always something to worry about at Sonoma. Personally, I think if we move this date further up in the year, the dust would be a lot better. The weather would be a lot better for us. Nice, lush, green grass, I think it would look better. that Napa Valley wine onto the truck or onto the boot. I don't think that's any good for it, Tony. Now, one thing we have to talk about, for sure, is Zach Michaels' run tonight. Despite the fact that we're saying he's not the fastest car on the track, yada, yada, yada. He's having a whale of a time up front. You and the whales again. Yeah, that 25's actually come through the field quickest of anybody, I think. Dominique, not necessarily known as a road ringer, is pretty respectable at these places. Rick Jackson, on the other hand, has always struggled compared to his own promise. I'll tell you what, I'm really, uh, really nice to see the run out of the 15 car so far. Not somebody pre-race I would have pegged to be running in the top 10 here. Stay out of trouble. Have a good finish. Of course, you have to rely on luck as well, where the cautions fly. That kind of thing. You look at a guy like John Batista. He's still way, way back at 26th. Yeah, hasn't had much luck today. It's still early stages in the race too, so it, it would be pretty dumb to do a bonsai move this early on. Well, I don't know if Tim needs to make a bonsai. He is definitely... Oh! He's definitely O? Oh? Side by side going to the S's. Tim made the bonsai move. He bonsai. He bonsai. Meanwhile, Scott Jackson and Tony Pizarro racing right behind. But it looks like Zach Michael is going to somehow save that position. McDonald's going to try again. He is on the bumper. He is really, 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 really trying hard. He knows that he needs to get that lead to pull away from the field. Can he do it? Will he do it? Outside move. That might work. It worked earlier for somebody else. Can it work again? Oh, oh. There's too much going on at once. Too much. Too much. Oh, he's got him now. He's got him. Oh. No, he doesn't. Oh, had to lift. McDonald had to Did lift. lead the lap. Zach Michael pinched him very hard going into that sharp corner to the left. Coming to the start finish line. Going to maintain the spot for now. McDonald is still right behind. Oh, Ellie. Meanwhile, the back of the field barrel rolls. I don't see anybody in trouble. Everybody seems to be okay at this point. For now. Jackson still holding off Bizarro the same way Michael's holding off Tim. You're all calm and cool and collected, waiting for them to make a mistake. It's still kind of amazing how big the gap between first and tenth already is, though. You 
get you an idea, if we get a nice long green flag run, we're going to end up with cars all over this racetrack. Oh, we got a yellow. I say green flag run, and what do we get? We get us a selfie. Get us a yellow. Yellow flag is out. Yellow flag is out. Looks like Please pardon the stroke I had a moment ago. Looks like Randy Dobbins had a problem. That is not a good looking wreck right there. As you can see, Bill Workheiser and oh. Randy Dobbins, teammates. Remarkably similar to the earlier incident at the front of the field, except 96 couldn't stay out of the wall. That's a that's probably game over, and I don't know where he thought he was going. He saw O'Reilly Auto Parts and saw red. Apparently he saw white because he hit the white tire barrier. I think he was just running his line and got run over. He wants his MTV. This is also going to take his chase, his chase battle hopes almost dead. Not looking good. It's amazing, we just can't seem to get more than six or eight green flag laps though. May mean the traffic won't become a factor. Yeah, the cautions are coming out at pretty good times. Not too close to each other, but not too far. Now I'm wondering what pit stops are going to be here. If anyone's going to try some interesting strategy. Well, the goal, especially with this many yellows, is to try to make the fewest pit stops possible. Well, that could be, but on lap 25. Gotta be at least halfway out of gas by now, you know? Here comes the field. Here they come. This is, t this is everybody's chance to make some passes. Can Tim McDonald pass Zach Michael under the pits? We see all I, think, I think we prefer to do it in the pits, not under it. Under the pits, on the pits, next to the pits, over the pits, into the pits. You gotta be the pits! Oh, McDonald comes out. Can he beat Michael out? Oh, it's not looking good for that scenario to play. It's gonna be Zach Michael, Tim McDonald, Tony Pizarro, Scott Jackson, Ryan Hoiser, Matthew Dominic, Dalton Lucas stays out. He is our new leader. This could get ugly. <laughs> Dalton Lucas knows he is in the position to be successful, but can he maintain that spot for too long? It will be Dalton Lucas, Tim McDonald, Scott Jack. Oh, we got a blower! We got a blower! We got a blow! Bracing! Try to see what car that is. That is going to be all-star race winner Alan Nesfeder. Blowed up under the caution flag. It'll be an end day for him. But we must move on as the race will go green with a slow car up front leading. Well, that's a little rude. Well, yeah. Here we go. Green flag, green, green, green. Lucas, already side by side with Zach Michael. Oh man, oh man. Michael's gonna clear a McDonald now in the shadow dust of the 88. Side by side, going up the uphill. Looks like he's going to clear. Now Pizarro is the next car to 
Well, I guess uh, I was being overly sensitive when I insinuated you shouldn't roll out a slow car. Matt Raboyne into the dirt. He's uh, doing a lot of off-roading in this race, ain't he? Yes, as pretty much everyone in the field has. As you see Scott Jackson pass Pizarro on the outside lane to the Hinsons, as he is stuck behind Dalton. Meanwhile, Zach and Tim are back in the positions they were in in the last run. John is inside the top 20. Yeah, it looked like he picked up a few spots there on pit road. Looks like Pizarro might maintain the spot next to Ryan Hoiser, but Hoiser makes a charge going down the downhill. Something the real question is, oh, man. does somebody pump this 88 or do we uh, stay patient for a while? Oh, I just saw somebody off the back, I think it was Miller. Zach Miller trying his best to maintain his position. in stages like this, too high pressure. Now we got the Tony and Tony show into the S's. Pizarro is going to keep the spot ahead of the ball because he finally finds room to just stay single file. John Batista, Dave Miller, and Kevin Kevin race side by side just outside of the top ten. Under. Well, we got Alex Crapser and Tony Long racing up in front, side by side. Yeah, that 04 has finally made it to the top 10. We got another yellow. I think Steven Spears is literally just riding behind the pack, because every time I see him, he's like way, way, way back. Yeah, I think they're down on power in that car. Some sponsorship might help. Either that or he's making pit stops under green here. I'm not seeing him shift to fourth, so I'm wondering if that has him. Well, they couldn't afford fourth here. Uh... Meanwhile, Bill Workheiser makes a pit stop. That could pay off for you if under yellow everybody else pits, but if uh, everybody stays out, you're kind of in trouble. Oh! Oh man, oh man. Dan Johnston gets turned. Yeah, we keep seeing contact there, and then we go full Baja, and uh... Oh! He actually did a good job of not coming across the track. He just got collected. Yeah, it looks like Glenn was already side by side. You're not as good as you once was. We're as fine as they possibly can. Spears is changing his sponsor to Help Wanted to Help Needed. I think he's actually now changed to Help Me, Help Me, Oh Somebody Help Me. Dalton Lucas is going to make a pit stop here. You think he would have stayed committed to that strategy, but he is not. He may have seen the writing on the wall. It's pretty clear if he stays out there, someone's going to turn him eventually. He's seeing what his teammates are doing going through the field, and he's thinking, well, maybe if I have fresh tires, I can do that. All right. It's I may have bad news for him. What? I don't think he can do that. <laughs> right now, despite the lack of 
uh, ability of Dalton Lucas to get through the field. It is Zach Michael, Tim McDonald, Scott Jackson, Ryan Hoiser, Matthew Dominique, Tony Bizarro, Alex Crapser, Tony Long, Rick Jackson, Johnny Reed Foley, John Batista, all the way back to the 11th position. That can get through the field as they are already through the field. All right. It's going to be interesting. Zach Michael has led at 29 of the 30 laps so far. And he, oh, no, he hasn't, because Lucas has led a couple. I was going to say, I thought he's only led like 27 of them now. Oh, man, oh, man, three wide, three wide, coming into turn one A, B, C, D. Here we go. Oh, into the dirt. That is a man on a mission, Mr. Skittle himself, John Batista, driving through already into the top ten, looking for more, looking for more. But, but that's a lifesaver's car. Yes. Just like Skittles. They taste the same, only if you imagine it as so. Alright, uh, producer, remind me to take the drugs away from him. Batista and Tony Long racing hard. Looks like Batista's gonna take the spot for the S's. So it's only taken 30 some odd laps, but he's pretty much gotten back to where he was. Yeah, I mean, when you think about it, even though it, it seemed like it was a very long time, it really wasn't to get the field. No, there was a lot of yellow in there. Plus he was gaining about a spot for that. That's pretty good here. But making that three wide move really helped. Sometimes. Now the question is, do we ever settle down and get a nice long green flag run out of this? something extra to get by him. Well, in a situation like this, you sort of, you, you kind of get to a point where you ride behind him, try to figure out where you are faster, and figure out what moves you can try, and try to come up with something new, because they're going to be able to defend a the move they've seen before. They're not really going to know what to do when you pull something brand new out of your hat. The problem is there's only so many new things you can try. That's the worst thing. If you fail to execute on one move, they're going to expect it again and not let you do it again. So well, you can almost cold trickle them, too. Yes, go from 43rd to 1st at Daytona without drink. I, I, actually, I was more going with make them think you're going one way, keep keep fainting that way, faint that way, and then when it matters, cut the other. Got a good race for the 7th position. Mr. No Curb, John Batista goes over the curb. Finds his way still behind Pizarro after all of his sudden Yeah, the inside there, you really gotta pinch it not to roll up and hit the guy. And you just can't get the run off. Now, if you dial that aggression up, you ain't afraid to hit him. You might make that move work. Well, the highest aggression guy of the day is Johnny Reed Foley. I don't know. I'm not sure.
afraid of attrition. Keep up. trying to figure out ways to beat the 22 and the 39 at these types of tracks. It looks like it's going to be a successful endeavor, at least as far as being competitive towards them. Obviously, McDonald and Batista are still heavy favorites to win, as well as Tony Pizarro. And all three of them are showing some speed tonight. As we saw, Matthew, Dominique, and Alex Kraps race hard for the fifth position. Now, I know, I know I'm going to jinx it, but we're starting to look at the looks of a green flag run. It kind of looks like it. Tony Long's held up anybody else who could possibly crash up front. As we see Rick Jackson still losing position, he's having trouble passing the 15. This is a race for the 11th spot. Like battle for ninth here, Ken Pettit underneath of Johnny Ring Foley going into that sharp corner. But it looks like Foley will still prevail. And one thing that's shocking me is Matt Reborn finally getting back up to the field. I thought it would take a lot longer. He's already caught up to Dave Miller and John Tharp. I mean, we saw how quick the 39 came through. I mean, arguably the 39 had some actual damage. Battle. 
for the fourth position as Ryan Boyser loses ground. Yeah, these gaps are really starting to open up. Like I said earlier, we get green flag runs. I think what might decide this is how well people can get through the traffic. And if it comes down to getting through traffic, I might put some money on that 39. He's already done once. Oh yeah. Hopefully he won't have to do it again. If he just stays where he's at, he stays on the road, I think the good for the win here. But we really gotta start giving more credit to Zach Michael for leading this practically this whole race so far. It's been pretty impressive. It would be a nice thing to see as it means he's had some uh, really good runs that didn't come together for him. Oh yeah, he's had some pretty, a few mediocre runs too, but it looks like when he has a good run, usually something bad happens to him late in the race and kind of screws up some of his points. But he's still way up in the standings, still in the top 15, looking to get that chase. What's amazing is how far ahead the lead two have gotten. They've got nearly five seconds. Yeah, they're way ahead right now. It's not even close. I think, honestly, I think the two of them are sick of seeing all these yellows. I don't think they mind the yellows so much as long as they stay one and two. But yeah, but we, we stay green. That gap will keep getting bigger, and you don't even have to worry about those guys anymore. A little surprised at how far back the 12 has gotten. Yeah, Pizarro had a really, really bad restart. Let's look in the back of the field a little bit, see what's going on with Steven Spears and gang. I was unaware Steven Spears had joined a gang. Right now, Glenn and Scott Drake are ahead of him. He's just kind of riding behind, biding his time. All the way back in the 39th position. Last car on the track. Already about a half a lap down to the leader at this point. 30, over 37 seconds behind. 39 seconds behind. He lost three seconds that lap. Sponsorship is needed. The problem is it's a real catch-22. When you need sponsorship, you don't run well, so nobody sees you, so they don't want to sponsor you, so you don't get a sponsor, so you don't run well. It's a never-ending cycle for Steven Spears. The Circle of Spears. Meanwhile, his teammate, Zach Michael, start stealing their teammates' cars. Well, Spears is running the development car, just like Adam Krapser is driving the development car for Mr. Lucas Racing. Interesting guy, that Lucas. You'd, you'd have thought his, you would have thought Lucas was his last name, and that that was the name of the team. His last name is actually Racing. I don't think so, because he's on the track, his name is Dalton Lucas. That would have been a perfect time to do the Al Borland quote. I don't think so, too. That was a heck of a move. I don't think it's going to stick, though. Nobody's been able to make that move work at 7, it seems like. And if anything, it just makes you go backwards. If you can get far enough in, it can be done. It's just so hard to dive it in that hard to actually get in front that much. Otherwise, you just lose it, like what just happened there. But you're not kidding, John Batista, he's going fast, and you can see Tony Pizarro losing about almost a full second per lap. He's way behind. Cole is actually trying to pass him right now. I will say, the troubles people are having in 7 make me miss the old corner. The old corner is a top bump. Yes, the old corner where you could go twice as fast. Yeah, you still have to slow down. It was a little bit faster of a corner, but it was also a tighter corner. And you 
you could really hammer that curve. Sometimes there's no need to go up past 
pass the guy and burn off what you got. Sometimes it's beneficial to just let him set the pace if you're both pulling away, but that's not usually his style. You know Zach Michael's gonna fight hard to keep that lead. Probably end up wrecked. Michael ran a 96.0. Steven Spears ran a 92.1. Uh, those are not times. Mile an hour. Given that each time the camera cuts, I swear I hear the engines of the cars ahead a little bit. Oh yeah, there's like three corners in it. Appreciating performance between these two cars. One, two, nobody else close. Yeah, it's a bit, I think it's going to be a bit of a chess match here. I, I really do think it's going to matter who can get through the traffic. Because the traffic has a strong opportunity to hold the leader up. But it can also hold everybody else up. So Honestly, if we're getting near the fuel range, I would think one of these crew chiefs might start thinking to himself, let's go ahead and bring them in before we catch the lap cars. So that we can be out without them in front of us holding us up. That's a good strategy, but the way I look at it, if they're both going to be stuck, they might as well both stay out. It's just a matter of which one will come in first and make that move. And I think if you get held up by the lap cars, the undercut's going to work. There's also a big enough gap through the field that even if the yellow comes out, you're going to be okay. Well, one thing, yeah, those cars are so slow, you might be able to pass them pretty quick, actually. If you can't, though... It's going to be much more beneficial to have already pitted and be running fast times. So when that guy pits, you're going to be ahead of him when he comes out. And first, what we're all forgetting is uh, Zach will probably go up there and just wreck Spears. You know, I don't think Spears would mind being wrecked at this point. It would be an improvement. Oh no! Oh. Something bad happened. Oh, Tony Long, tons of damage. We're still green. Oh! Just made to believe that he got spun off the track. It would appear as such. He is stuck. Oh, oh, that's a new incident. We haven't seen one of those yet today. I was expecting to see him turn on the exit. He is stuck that's inside that tire wall. That's a lot of damage. That might be his day. It's a shame because he was really doing a good job holding off everybody. But... Yeah, but that Zach Miller that got him? Yeah, Zach Miller got a little bit impatient there. Oh, even he he got into the wall too. Yeah, I was going to say, I think he didn't get away with that Scott Free. This is Zach that's got him. Let's take a look at oh, Zach yeah, Miller's yeah. onboard. That's gonna put both that's gonna put both of them down the running order. It's an unfortunate way to give up about ten spots it looks like. He's probably gonna have to repair that damage too. We're gonna fix that damage. Looks like Zach Miller's gonna go into the pits here. Well, that might actually kick 
off the round of green flag stops, it may not hurt him as badly as it could have. He still could have lost a lot of time from the incident itself, but the pit stop may not be that big of a deal. I'm wondering if he's going to lose a lap here, because he has to fix that damage too, and he already lost a lot of time. It takes a long while to lose a lap here, though. I don't know, you gotta keep in mind how far back they were. Man. Oh man! He's wedged in between Zach Michael and Tim McDonald right now. That gave Zach a huge advantage. Yeah, now, given the uh, history, I would not be surprised if the 22 wrecks him. Wow. It's the Zach and Zach show. Zach Michael, Zach Miller, and Tim McDonald. Like, what? What? Somebody's a Kyle Petty. What the fuck was that? Meanwhile, we have a great race for last right now. Scott Drake, Steven Spears, and well, Glenn I, I Kaufman. I hate to correct you, that's not for last anymore. That's right, because Zach Miller is now last. And they're gonna, the leader's going to catch these guys in the next couple of laps. There ain't much time left before this uh, becomes a problem for Zach. Tim McDonald and Zach Miller side by side. Going down into turn 12 to the start finish line. Looks like Tim McDonald's gonna get that advantage. But right now, Zach is stuck behind the traffic. I, I, think, I think we have some onboard radio. Damn lap cars! His paint scheme is inspired by Ward Burton. If I inspired by, we need ripped off from. Look at this 71 holding up the leader. Whoa, Steven Spears and Glenn Coffin make... Gel Glenn Coffin, he was about to be a coffin. Glenn Coffin. Made contact. Made oh, can Spears find his four mile an hour off the pace car and keep it on the lead lap? It's going to be a challenge. He's practically pushing him down to 11 here. Whoa, I McDonald. think he is pushing him down to 11. McDonald makes a bonsai move. Almost passes Zach Michael in the process. Yeah, these lap cars have brought him right back in. Holy crap. Give credit to Glenn, he's almost about halfway done with the race, he's still on the lead lap. Well, not for much longer, eh? <laughs> Whoa, you're not kidding! Whoa! Gah! He's still here with the pass in the grass! Woo! Oh, he turned yes. yes! Pass in the grass! He stays on the lead lap for an extra five seconds! Now that's gotta be a black flag or something, right? <laughs> that is how Glenn Kaufman, this is the 80s Glenn Kaufman, he's returned. 80s? I think this might have been the 30s doing all that dirt road. <laughs> and unfortunately, 22 got stuck in the middle of that and didn't get through. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> that is what we call Magic Glenn. At work, as Zach Michael is way ahead now because Tim McDonald can't pass the Clorox machine, but now he finally does. The Clorox Dream Machine. Dream of Clorox, but don't drink it. Let's take another look at that, actually. That's kind of interesting. We're, we're going to have one of those that's going to be big at some point this race. Somebody's going to get absolutely bored. Worse than Tony did. Oh man, <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
That's about as close as you can get on like three different levels from not dying. Jeez. The end of that wall is already ended one person. <laughs> Well, it's Zach Michael, about almost two seconds ahead now, as Dave Butterworth is the next victim. Yeah, we'll have to see if the gap stays the same when they have a little bit of clean air or whether it closes up a bit. left until the halfway point. Michael way ahead, everybody else in the log jam behind. I believe in honor of the track we're gonna call it the halfway Sears point. Uh, yes. Michael passes McDonald pretty easily, or Butterworth, I should uh, say. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, that, that, that's not who that was. Jack came down a little bit that lap, but I think there was a little bit of holding up happening. We've but I'm curious up now, what's the next pack of cars these leaders are going to catch? It would appear to be Mark Guthrie, who's about six seconds ahead. Then we got a huge pack in front of that. That huge pack I think will matter, but I think we're going to get pit stops before they catch that pack. I feel like we should pit soon. Soon. If you pit it halfway, then you can probably go to about 20 some odd to go and make it on uh, one more stop. If Batista can get past Ryan, he might be able to maintain pace with Zach and Tim here. He just needs I to do able, it. He might be able to go catch the 38 even. I think he can catch the 38. I don't think he'll be able to I'm catch anybody else. I'm absolutely blown away that the 12 is 30 seconds off. Yeah, something's wrong. I don't know what's going on or why well, he's slow. Getting Dort and putting the tires might have something to do with it. Probably. It's probably the damage. But the I feel like either they caught somebody or one of them hit it. Because that gap went way up. Nah, no, Michael's still first, McDonald's still second. Yeah, that gap to second went way up now. It's possible the 81 held him up. Yeah, I think that's what happened. But right now it's a little bit clean right now, other than Mark Guthrie, who's about a few seconds ahead. John Batista and Ryan Hoiser race side by side. But Hoiser keeps the position and has the preferred line going into the S's. Yeah, I mean, as, as we saw, if you have a lot better car, you can make those passes off that corner. But the only cars I've seen get past there are the lap cars. Oh man, here we go. Here we go, it's starting now. Green flag pit stops. Green flag pit stops. What can John Batista do to make his Probably car better? Probably four tires and fuel. He does not need to make any adjustments. His car is too fast. Let's look at the helicam. All right. Oh no, we've got a yellow. Yellow. This will either be great for the 39 or end him, depending on what happens. I expect everybody else to pit them and cycle him to the lead. Wow, what a good time to pit. Holy crap. Yeah, 
John Batista comes out looking pretty good. Let's see what happens. I'm not sure the leaders have even taken the yellow yet. Mark Guthrie keeps his lap. It's going to be single file, so the lap cars will be just mixed in. And it looks like John Batista was in before the caution came out. Yeah, the lights weren't red at pit road, so we definitely made it. So what caused this yellow? Oh, it looks like a battle for 14th position. It's also a very questionable yellow. That might have changed the complexion of the race for one driver. And having Zach Michael not leading, that's going to be huge for him. Yeah, we'll see if that car is as good in traffic as it was out front. Alright, I'm expecting everybody to come in for a pit stop. I won't be shocked if a couple of people stay out that might have been off sequence, like maybe the 88. Oh man, we're seeing some strategy play out now. Wow. Uh, that's a lot more people staying out than I was expecting. McDonald stays out, Michael comes in. Ryan, Matthew Dominique stays out. Alex Kratt, a lot of cars stay out. Ken Pettit, Rick that Jackson. That really surprises me. That, that indicates then that the 39 is coming in real early in the window. Scott Jackson and Pizarro are in. Zach Michaels in. Everybody else that was competitive. Wow. That's huge because I don't know if Zach Michael can maintain that pace. Well, and keep in mind, bad things happen when you're back in the pack. Oh yeah, he's going to be way back in the pack now. He's probably 20th spot. Th this could be where the day turns for him. This could either this could either, this could be a turning point in a couple of different directions, and we'll just have to wait and see which way it turns. So Batista is actually not that far ahead. He's not in much of a better position than Zach Michael is. Just a few spots ahead. Yeah, he did. He did get the spot though on everybody that pitted. He's ahead everybody that pitted. And I see we got the 15 back out there. It yeah, looks like Tony Long's back out. How many laps did he lose in that uh, RG Bargy? He lost three. The unfortunate thing for uh, all these guys that pitted is some of the cars that are ahead of them are just slow. And the scary thing is Tim McDonald's now leading. The question is how far is he going to go on the fuel and how good are those tires going to be? The tires might actually matter on this run. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see the guys that pitted. He's got a good buffer with a lap car too. we go. Tim McDonald in front of Scott Drake. Ryan Hoiser second. Matthew Dominique third. Alex Krapser fourth. Ken Pettit, Rick Jackson, Johnny Reed Foley, John Tharp, Dave Miller. Here we go. Coming to the flag. Here we go. Green is out. Green is out. Can Zach, Michael, and John Batista get through the field? It's going to be an interesting take. Boys are already past Drake. Yeah, that 71 didn't even go. Dominique past Drake. Can Alex Krapser and Ken That Pettit. is a mean looking pack back there. Oh yeah. When you have a slow car in front, it's going to jack up everybody. Three wide. Three wide. Crazy. Crazy. We're crazy. Crazy for racing so hard so early.
Batista back in all of this mess. Michael way, way back. Yeah, it's gonna be slow progress to get through some of these guys too. second lead at the front. I think something happened. Oh, oh. I bet you he got run off the track. Oh, no. Because I was looking for him. He got spun. Pizarro spun him. Oh, God. What a dick. Oh, God. No, why would you do that? No. No. Zach Michael's dead. Here comes the giant fist. Zach Michaels Day has just gone from good to dead in the well, hands of Pizarro. That, that could have been worse. There's no damage permanently done to that car, so uh, a yellow flag will get him right back into it. I think a long green flag run and he'll make up some of this ground, too. I just don't know just, if he's fast enough. I, if we saw anything when he was leading, he's faster than this whole field, but track position may matter there. Holy crap. I think he's going to be able to run down a bunch of the slow cars in a few laps, but... Either way, that just screwed him pretty big. Meanwhile, McDonnell is still in the lead. Boyser second, Dominique third. Crapser fourth, and Ken Pettit fifth. And many cars are still trying to get past the lap car of Scott Drake. We see Rick Jackson trying to make his move. And I don't know if it's going to be successful. That's a pretty tough corner to pass on, but it looks like he might do it. As we have reached our halftime break. A break? Give me a break. Give me a break. Give me a break. Break me off a piece of that second half. Time for an ad break. All right, Mike Joy, what are you gonna do now? I'm gonna go to Disney World. Fuck Wars. you, boy! If you're coming up to buy a new car this weekend, you're a big enough smoke to cook a big hell hell's car. Bad deal. Car is a breakdown. Please, if you think you're gonna find a bargain at Big Hill, you can kiss my ass. It's our belief that you're such a stupid motherfucker. Don't fall for this bullshit. Guaranteed. If you find a better deal, shove it up your ugly ass. You heard us right. Shove it up your ugly ass. Bring your tray. Bring your tie. Bring your wine. We'll fuck her. That's right. We'll fuck your wife. Because it's Big Hill Hell. You're about six ways from Sunday. Take a hike to Big Bill Hell. Home of Challenge Pissing. That's right. Challenge Pissing. How does it work? If you can piss six feet in the air straight up and not get wet, you get no down payment. Don't wait. Don't delay. Don't fuck with us or we'll rip your nuts off. Only at Big Bill Hell. The only dealer that tells you to fuck off. Hurry up, asshole. This event is the minute after you write us a check. And it better not bother so you're a dead motherfucker. Go to hell. Big Bill Hell's car. Home for filthy is an exclusive home of the meanest sons of bitches in the state of Maryland. All right, Maryland really wanted to promote that. <laughs> Back to racing, with Scott Drake still holding up a bunch of people. Johnny Reed Foley underneath, doing everything he can to get to the front. Looks like he has his car packaged pretty good on this run. Oh shit. Sticky keys. Alright, let's go back to the action here. Well, man. <laughs> that was really the wrong button. Six times. What is wrong with you? the action. Well, that's good. If you hadn't have figured it out quick, I was going to find the uh, 
the time NASCAR on TNT came back from commercial, told us the top five and went straight back to commercial. Alright, we are back. Johnny Reed Foley and John Tharp have passed Scott Drake. Now Dave Miller, Ben Gear, and Donald Stewart, last week's winner, are trying to do the same. Can they do it successfully? Can they do it without hesitation? Find out next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. There goes Mr. Dave Miller. And there goes Mr. Donald Stewart trying to follow suit with the QSM horsepower. John Batista's really running through the field right now. He's already in the top 15. Looking to escort his way with his excellent full fuel load to the front. Yes, excellent fuel, full fuel, fuel, full, full load of fuel. Stroke. I guess that was inevitable, wasn't it? Well, I guess somebody was fed up with him being in the way, huh? Looks like it. Oh. I wonder if that got him out of the way of everybody. That was Scott Drake's fault. He just cut across his nose. Yeah, when you leave the door open that late, it's a little late to, to, to close the door. safe to say that maybe Batista is not as fast as he was on the last run. Could be. I think it's a lot of track position here. I think he's ended up in a bad place on track. The, the pit cycle just did not work out for him the way it needed to. It looked like it was going to, but all this strategy. I think it might have worked out. It's just he has to wait for people to pit. Yeah, I, I, I did not think he was short pitting when he came in, but he had to have been for everybody who stayed out to continue to stay out. I think it's still the best scenario that could have happened there. Well, the best scenario would have been everybody pits and he goes to the lead. Well, if everybody pitted, he wouldn't have been the leader. Why not? Well, unless there was a caution. I'm and talking about when the caution came out. If everybody had pitted like we thought they were going to, he'd have been in a perfect position. I see. That is very true. True statements. It's a log. 
Spears ain't holding people up worse. Back behind this. His car might not be so bad, it's just he was always last, so he would never move anywhere. You know, he'd be way, way back, like 30 seconds behind for whatever reason. But he stuck behind Glenn. I think if JB wants to win, he's going to make that outside move keep working on the last corner because he's making it work really, really well. He just did the same thing again to Michael. Pass, no problem. Up to 12th, 13th. Meanwhile, up front, it's still Tim McDonald first, Ryan Boiser, Matthew Dominic, Alex Crabster, and Ken Pettit. Let's see how Zach Michael is doing. Hopefully he's held the back of the field again. Yeah, Zach is currently in 29th. He's passed three cars already. Trying to get past Adam Crapser, but he's caught up to the main crowd. And that's what matters. I didn't know Alex was from Maine. Yes, he is from Maine, Michigan. Lotus from Wisconsin. Yes. Wisconsin, also known as West Michigan. Or West Maine. No, that's Washington. Or is it Oregon? I think it's actually Oregon. Sorry. No, I was right. West Maine. Oh, Michael making a lot of interesting moves at this point. One must wonder if his anxiety for losing that much ground is going to cause him to do something weird. Something weird, like chug chocolate milk while singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? While racing. He's having trouble clearing Adam right here. I think he's going to pass him. Wow, all that effort couldn't even get by. It's dire straits for Zach Michaels winning the opportunity. So what, he wants his MTV now too? Meanwhile, McDonald already has a six second lead. Way, way ahead. He's just stopping the field right now. The only one that might have a chance to catch him is Batista, but he's nowhere up front. Makes us maybe have to go back to your earlier question of whether he was riding behind that 20 car. Could be, because they didn't pull away this fast, I don't think. They pulled away pretty fast, but this is, this is crazy. Let's give Ken Pettit some credit here. He's in the top five, and he's been up in the top ten all day. Was that rhyme intended? I don't know what happened. You rhymed Pettit and Credit. I must have. It was not intentional. Look at that Honda machine go. Ward Burton saying, he's better than me in that Caterpillar car. Well, that's because the only thing I can think of Ward Burton doing in a cat car at Sonoma was rolling over. And it was a slow rollover. He barely clipped the dirt. Oh man, here we go. This is now it's time get to see here. how this all cycles out. I think he's going to come out in the middle of the field, but he will probably probably be ahead of some of the guys he was racing earlier. Still, Ryan Hoiser takes the lead. Matthew Dominique's also in in the back. This is going to be interesting for John Batista. I, I think this is still going to work out for him. He did his pit stop and already made up all the time from it. He doesn't need to pit. The problem he's going to run across is if he needs to do one more pit stop than everybody else because he's short pitted, then he's going to be kind of screwed. It would depend on how the cautions fall. Johnny Reed Foley also in. Tim McDonald out. Was, was that left sides only? I think they're all doing that. That's bizarre. Yeah, I 
didn't have enough of a gap to stay ahead of anybody, so I, I don't think the strategy's working out. Well, it doesn't look like that yet. As we're going to see a couple more of the leaders come in, in fact, the leader right now, Ryan Hoiser, who's finally led a lap after three races, is now in the pits. Ken Pettit leads a lap at a road course. It's not entirely unheard of. Alex Kraps are in, Rick Jackson in, lots of cars in. traffic that Zach Michaels in, those 10 cars that fly by, led by Glenn. Looking pretty dicey. Tim McDonald comes out ahead of Ryan Hoiser and Alex Krapser. Which was to be expected. Yeah, with that much of a gap, I don't think there's any threat from anybody that was on the same strategy, but everybody on the other strategy is going to be ahead now. The question is, is the pace going to be still in it? Because the pace is still in it, you're going to run right back down. is in. He's in. Scott Jackson stays out. John Batista second. Look at those grandstands right behind the pits. They're the two-dimensional grandstands! They're throwing bottle cans, they're throwing hats, they're throwing razor blades, they're throwing... What?! I don't think they're doing any of those things! Tim McDonald comes out ahead of Ken Pettit. Ken might actually get second place here. Have a really good pit stop. Or second place out of the cars that pitted. Alex Kraps or Matthew Dominic. And then Ryan Hoyser. Ryan would have had some good of a pit stop. So after all this, Scott Jackson comes out as your leader. John Batista, Matt Ramoy, and Tony Pizarro. Zach Michael up to eighth. Man, there is so much dust. Holy crap. Yellow flag is out. Yellow is out. Something somebody's, bad happened. Yeah, somebody's going off in the asses. Would be my guess from all that dust. Now this, I don't know what this does to the strategy here. This, this gets it all confused. I think there was a great advantage to the guys that had pitted under the yellow if we stayed green because they had a big gap, but now that gap is gone. see what Tim McDonald saw, because apparently he was pretty close to it. Jeez! <laughs> Looks like there was just a cluster of uh, cars that ran into each other there in that chute. I think somebody, yeah, somebody got knocked wide and uh, what I predicted happened. Spin this guy. Whoa. Yeah, that's what all that dust in the S's is from. Yeah, somebody got hooked off the three and went, oh, it was butter. Bush's best baked beans butter. Bush's oh. best jumping beans. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh no! Anybody but Zack, come on, man. What's amazing is that the huge wreck was behind him. Yeah, I think they're all okay, actually. I, I don't think there's any too substantial damage from that, but it's, if we're gonna get one where somebody comes back and just T-bones a couple of cars. shouldn't. Yeah, nobody should pit here. Except the people that were that were damaged in the wreck enough to have to fix anything. Let's take a look. We got 39 laps to go. There is incentive to pit. Maybe you can make it from here and those are a lap or two. Uh, yeah, you probably could make it from here actually, based on the run we saw earlier. Uh, this is gonna be interesting. I think Scott might be pitting here. And JB might have forgotten how to accelerate. I think JB's deciding on what to do. I think he might have just broken. Jeez, go! It's a split strategy. That surprises me. I think the right call here was to stay out, especially if you were just in. A couple laps of fuel is not going to make much of a difference when you're running around under yellow anyway. Yeah, Zach Michael came in. I came in. Yeah, Zach needed to, though. He had damage from that. Batista made the right move and stayed out, but he's going to have less fuel than all the time. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it's going to be a problem for him. He, I don't think he can make it. I, if, if anybody can make it, it's not him. <laughs> I think I phrased that weird. If anybody's going to run out, it'll be JB. Three wide coming out of the pits. Who can do it? Who can do it? Oh, Upside down! Oh, contact! Steven Spears does the smart thing and lets off. Scott Steven Spears does the smart thing and fucking retires. <laughs> Alright. I think John Batista's the only car that stayed out then. That has old time. Yeah, we'll have to see it cycle through. I mean, I stayed out too, but I had just been in the pit like two laps earlier. And Miller's a lap down, which is going to help JV on the start. John Batista finally made it back to the front after all that. Let's see if he stays there. Here we go. There's gonna be 30 laps to go. Zach Miller's not slow enough to really hold anybody up a lot. That's, that's actually part of the problem. If he was a lot slower, everybody clear him on the start and it wouldn't be an issue. However, if he's just fast enough to mess up JB, that could be another issue entirely. Let's green, let's green! Oh no! Oh, that looks really ugly at the back. Oh, there goes Ben. That's pretty much his season, the way that's been going. Wow. Lots of good racing back here. I don't know if there's a yellow yet. McDonald's still not in front of Zach Miller. Yeah, no, that 28 is, is not a fast car, but it's also not a slow enough car to make it easy to get around. 
thing I realized about Foley's car, it looks good except for the good here, which is light blue. I don't know why. I think, the, I think the reason for that is he was going off, there, I don't know if this is still the case, but there was a point in time where there were only three colors you could actually put the Goodyear logo on the car in the real series. It was blue, white, and yellow. And for some reason he didn't like white on that paint scheme, even though I think that worked better. was the opposite of red, so I guess maybe it could be seen. And we are still green. It looks like it. Well, in that case, let's see what happened to them. say real quick that this is the ultimate show of resilience this is awesome from last to first I don't think he was ever technically last he was last on the track at one point or at least second to last I think even after he got spun he was I think still ahead of Spears what happened to Zach Meanwhile, they would appear 
that to McDonald's has still not gotten by. Damn lap cars. He was up there all damn day. Wish I had something I could have shot through the window. Like, at that point, why would you even ask him more questions? You know he's going to say something very, very bad. I'm just going to say the wrong thing. It was like Ward Burton's version of Mike Stefanik. It's just bullshit. John Tharp and Matthew Dominic race side by side again as we see Pizarro and Munster. Neck Tharps going through the S's. Can he pass him? Can he make it stick? He zigzags just like his sponsor. Takes the spot away. John Tharp. of a driver, it looked like Alex Krapser just let Bizarro by. No contest, Bizarro up to seven. All Ryan boys are ten minutes race side by side for third. Ryan's got a slight faster car. There's a very good chance he's gonna clear him coming off the S's can do it. Just like he did. Do a stupid accent for this? <laughs> why not? Well, I, th I think that the 20 is going to make a good run through the field. Okay, I don't know why, Mr. Mackey. <laughs> you think he's going to win the race? I think he's got one of the better shots out there today. Okay. Now let's talk to uh, John Barista. Who do you think is the driver to be? Well, personally, I think it's that 12 car. The way he's been running people off the track, he's shown the aggression, he's got the speed, he just has to get there. Alright. Now let's talk to, uh, Tony Paisano. Uh, I think it's gonna be a fierce battle between only Tim. I think Tim is gonna pull away from the field if he finds a little bit John Batista. Right, thank you, Paisano, Barista, didn't even fake an accent! <laughs> oh, Donald. You didn't even try to fake an accent! I was expecting like shitty Mario, like, hey, Paisanos! I don't know, I don't do Actually, I think that's Luigi anyway. Hey, Mario! I think Mario sounds the same. Now, Mario does the. Thank you so much for playing my game. <laughs> Sounds like he's from the Ram. And so long, gay Bowser. Oh, it's a neck and neck and neck battle between friggin'. There's too many necks! Four between six. I 
I love how we're counting JB out of this race. I, I don't know how the strategy is going to pay out for him. Like, if, he's, if, he's, if he can do it in the same number of pit stops, he's in good shape, but I don't know if he can. And there's a yellow. Well, Batista's... I don't think Batista took the flag yet. No, but there is a yellow out. Where the hell is JB? He's way ahead. How, how did I end up with two lap cars? What the fuck? It's like you pass Scarberry and then you know, you're stuck behind two. Now one thing I will say, I don't think tires are going to matter because JB's on over the tires. He's doing pretty good. Well, and everybody's taking two anyway. The question is, do we need fuel again? If we need fuel again, that's one thing. They might all pit and JB's in good shape. Or JB could be the only one that pits and everybody else runs to the end. Or JB might have to take more fuel and lose the lead. That could be a possibility. He would have less fuel. What would be really nice if I could not be stuck behind Miller. You're doing everything you damn can not to be. Just shove him off into turn 11. Spin him on the exit, you know. See what happened here. Yes, yeah, so what was that yellow for? spots than Foley did. Oh, he did. Foley lost less spots. It, it didn't pay off for either one of them, that's for damn sure. Yeah, and then he lost four. Yeah, it didn't work out well. I can't wait to see JB pit and everybody else stay out. That's what I'm afraid is going to happen. Hopefully not. I mean, it, 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 at the very least, I'm hoping we stay on the same strategy that Miller and fucking Scarberry get out of the way. Because we don't need two lap cars coming up the works here. JB's pit. The question is, is anybody else coming in? Oh, boy. right there. I mean, even if everybody else has to pit, if, unless they all do it under green, he's he's not in good shape. And even then, if it's a if we have a run like we had before, by the end of that run, even if he's at the back of the field, I don't know if he'll be in any contention. He's just going to have to gain as many spots as he can. Now, granted, he took two tires. Half the field's gone by. He's not losing as many spots as he can. Well, the light's red at the end of pit road. He's gonna still be there. There's no stop sign here. Why was no, the light was green? I don't know why it was. It should have still been red. So Jamie's got slightly fresher tires, but the problem is. <laughs> and he's still ahead of Zach. It's not seeming to really matter. Zach's still green. Green came out specifically. Now, I think Rob is stuck between the leader and the pace car, isn't he? No wave arounds on an orange. That's gonna competition. That's gonna really gum up the start. JB back to 18th. Wow. Zach Michael back to Zach Michael 22nd. And 
Rob Scarberry going to be in the way? Yeah, very in the way, I would suspect. In fact, this might be the first on-track pass for lead we get to see when he blocks up the track and we go five wide into turn one. coming off of turn 11. Take off your caps, get off your seats. It's gonna be a mean one. Green flag, green, green, green. Look at McDonald make that outside jump work. Excellent job, McDonald. Alright, now he needs that 41 to hold everybody up. Looks like Ryan's gonna get past pretty quickly, but I don't know. Oh, he's not in the preferred line. He's gonna have to let Rob Scarberry go. Oh man, oh man. 20, 27 laps to go, and Ryan can't get by. John Tharp and Tony Pizarro battle hard for third. Tharp's going to maintain the position as Boiser is forced to pass on the outside lane because Scarberry's not giving him an inch. He's the Ryan Newman out here. Finally got him there, yep. He's gotten by, but now Tharp and Pizarro are stuck behind. Scarberry is not a super slow car. But he's slow he's enough. He's slow enough to really make that difference to where it's like, okay, I can't pass you quickly. Which makes it hard on me. Tharp's going to be able to get by Pizarro. Looks like he's going to have a throwing line on that sharp right hand. Well, Tim McDonald is two seconds ahead. Yeah, the leader does a good job of checking out, especially when there's a lap car in the mix. Johnny Reed Foley and Donald Stewart. position. John Batista still hanging out back there. Both fast cars that deserve to be in the top ten, but neither of them are, and 
because McDonald had a almost a two second lead there but it wasn't yeah it, it wasn't growing like it had before Yeah, we did. They just people keep getting turned there. That that and the exit of three are our hot spots. Well, the exit of three that then turns into turn four. At least here it's not dangerous coming off of three. That's just a well. It could be if you're stopped in the middle of the road and a whole bunch of cars keep on you. Right, but they're only going to be going 67. Now I'm curious if anyone's going to pit here. That's like every time, every time they come by the pits now, you're like wondering who's going to stay out and who's going to pit. I feel like now everybody can make it. You'd think so. But you never count anything out. Looks like everybody's staying out. That does not help the uh, strategy of the 39 car. Needed some people to pit and screw themselves over. It doesn't, but I think he's got a fast enough car to get back into the top 10. Zach Michael, I don't know. He's just been struggling ever since. So we're going to take this three start on lap 90. Yep, 21 laps to go. Everybody's ready, everybody's cramped. Pace car is in. No lap car is in the way this time. Well, not until you get about to the ninth. There we go, green flag, green, green, green. McDonald gets a decent jump. See John Tharp looking to get by Ryan for second. Not an unexpected move by any means. Bob Scarberry still in the way of some of the cars behind. We see John Batista get stacked up. Tony Pizarro underneath John Tharp. Can he make a move? Two, three, four, Tim, Ryan, John, and Tony. Coming into turn eleven, we're 
see the number 12 make a bonsai move into the hairpin. Aloha snack bar! Oh man, oh! This is getting pretty dicey. He's got a run, but coming off the corner on the low side, I don't know if he can pass him. Here he comes, going to turn 12. Oh, he's going to clear him. What a move. They're still kind of side by side. No, oh, he got him. What a move. Tony Pizarro the third, the car that was slow for half the race. Now looking to pounce. Sometimes it's known when to be fast. Pizarro now under Hoiser coming into the sharp right-handers. Wow. All day long he has not been a factor, hardly. Ryan for second, looking to get McDonald. John Batista up to 14th, Zach Michael 18th, they're both back in the top 20. And if anybody's curious, fastest laps of the race, Scott Jackson, 96, 60. Slowest fastest is Mark Guthrie, 93.365. Bizarro is chomping on that lead. Oh no, here comes the giant asteroid! Accident Ken Pettit overachieving today's top six. We've got three RTW race cars in the top six. David Butterworth is not in the top six. Well, unless you're counting the style points for jumps. It's looking like Pizarro might have the fastest car now, but lately, or the whole race, the leader's just been able to hold his ground. Yeah, and get a little gap on the starts, even. It's going to be interesting. And then everybody pits! <laughs> Laps to go. Oh man, oh me, oh my. Tim McDonald, Tony Pizarro, Ryan, John Tharp, Ken Pettit, Rick Jackson, Matthew Dunn, Jimmy Stevens, Johnny Reed Foley, and Alex Kraps are at the top 10. John Batista up to 13th, Zach Michael up to 17th, Chase Contender Dave Miller 16th, Craig with a modified in 11th. Sorrow. 
the whole time. Bring everything you can to hold him off is McDonald. This is probably the strongest competition he's had all day. Other than Zach Michael. It's the first time he's been leading and had somebody on his bumper the whole race. Yes. Pizarro takes the lead. 15. That's happened to me twice now. Where you get screwed off of that corner. Yeah, get squeezed into one. I'm seeing John Batista making moves. He is now 11. Oh, man. If Batista can get up front, I think he has something for Pizarro. So the problem is, if nobody's going to pit, the 12 is probably going to be as fast as he is right now for the rest of the race. There's still enough time that lap traffic could become a factor again, but it's unlikely. Jeez, three wide through there? That's a great idea. Speedy Alex Crapser and John Batista go three wide. No passing. You were 30 seconds behind. Yeah, and I was leading that, that group. That's the scary part. A lot of dust up there. Maybe my damage got fixed, I don't know. But even before that, I wasn't, I wasn't that fast. I think you got stuck somewhere, used your equipment to try to get through it. When you did, you didn't have anywhere to go. You'd already lost all the time. for each flip.
second gap now with 12 laps to go. And he ran the fastest lap of the race about a couple laps ago. First guy to break into the 97s. 97.224. So whatever they did on the last pit stop, they made him the fastest car all race at the right time. Wow. Only five cars have gotten to the 96, and he's got 97. 11 laps to go. Distance is still being pulled. This battle has commenced immensely. Well. John Tharp drives his way through Ryan and is going to get the third spot, trying to be the one to catch Pizarro. I'm really, yeah. I'm really shocked it's gotten this big. I don't really understand. Like, how can you be that slow and then just be that fast out of nowhere? Yeah. 
back in the top ten. He's in the top five. Right now it's Ken Pettit that's holding up everybody here. It's going to make it a good show for Zach Michael to get some spots. He's, he's only led the most laps. He led like the first half of the race. slower on these set of tires because Tharp wasn't this fast before compared to you. But either way, yeah, either way, either way. Yeah. Well, it's and Tony blows the motor coming to the white flag. I have to blow something at some point. This is just crazy. You're not catching Steven Spears right now, right? 
the next car would be Christian Torres or a lap car. And I could, and I could catch them. I was wondering where they were on track. I don't think they're close enough that, like, you have them in a big gap in the bottom. That is the good thing about Sonoma, you can see so much of the track there, if you have grandstand seats. I thought you were going to say your draw distance turned up. Gonna be here, there's three laps to go. At this point, I think it's over. Yeah, unless you blow a motor, you got this, or wreck yourself with a lap car or something really stupid. Uh, made a valiant effort to get to seventh. Zach Michael's still stuck behind the whole pack. Did so can we please the fans what they're going to get to see next week? Oh, uh, is that Daytona? I don't think so. What's after Sonoma now in New Hampshire? Okay. It might be, it might be uh, Chicago. Because it used to be Daytona. It's Chicago. Oh. I'm trying to remember if remember, I'm trying to remember if Chicago is even next week for extravaganza. Well, it's a track that only has one day. Well, I mean, the boo 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 when you have on this. That's probably. That's probably. You've got Chicago on the schedule. Okay. So Chicago. Hey, Chicago. Daytona, Kentucky, New Hampshire, Pocono, Watkins Glen, Lime Rock, Bristol, Darlington, Amy, Vegas, Richmond, Charlotte, Dover, Talladega, Kansas, Martinsville, Rockingham again, Phoenix, and Homestead. Well, all right. Well, we're at Chicago next week. We're going to take the East Coast swing, even though it's not East Coast. It's, it's, it's not even the East Coast. It's a lot more East Coast than this. That's what you think. Oh. As we see, John Tharp and Tim McDonald still race hard for second. He's gonna get it. It's for all the money, all the pride. Well, actually it's not, because it's for second. Well, they're racing for money and they're racing for pride. 25's fading back, isn't he? Yeah, he's back at 10th. That's still gonna keep his points lead, though, because... eight spots isn't gonna do it for you. Pretty far ahead. Ken's gonna still be up there in points. Um, who else was up there? Last lap. Let us go on the Pizarro Cam as he goes through two way. I'm sorry, that camera is only available at Pizarro Park. <laughs> it's been an unbelievable run. Struggled for most of the race, but somehow on the last pit stop, he was able to fight through traffic and get by Tim McDonald on a late race caution. Going into turn 11. As we see McDonald and John Tharp still race, I think McDonald's probably going to keep that spot. He's a couple car lengths ahead now. Boston Red Sox number 12 goes through the S's. This is like Jeff Gordon in 1998. He just pulled away from the field. And then he died. Jeff Gordon, all right. Coming into turn 11, all he has to do is coast from here. Well, not really, because he's going to go down to like 40 miles an hour. All right, all he has to, has to, is, all he has to do is coast from here. Coming off at turn 12, the drag strip, here he goes. Tony Pizarro wins at Sonoma. Here comes McDonald and Tharp. Who's gonna win second? Here comes McDonald. Valiant run, McDonald gets second. John Tharp third. Ryan Hoiser fourth. Rick Jackson gonna have a road course top five. 
Wow, the Twitch app had really good timing on shitting the bed. John Reed Foley. John Batista, eighth. Ken Pettit, ninth. Sorry, Ken Pettit, eighth. Jimmy Stevens, ninth. Matthew Dominique, Alex Crapser, Scott Jackson, Zach Michael, Craig Lee, Dalton Lucas, Dave Miller. Here comes Michael Henson. Walt Flower is 18th, a top 20 road course run. Donald Stewart. David Courtney in top 20. Oh, then it gets confusing. We've got Tyler Scott 21st, Dan Johnston 22nd, Matt Raboyne with a bad 23rd, Jonathan Scrappings, Brandon Raines, Ben Mark Guthrie, Dale Rosendahl, Aaron Cummings, Adam Crapson, Bill Morkaiser, Christian Torres, 32nd to round out the new lab cars. Rob Scarberry, Dave Butterworth, Stephen Spears, 35th, Zach Michael, 36th, Scott Drake, Glenn Kaufman, Tony Law, Alan Nesfeder, DNF, Randy Dobbins, DNF, and William Tuxpin. What'd you have for dinner tonight? Remember the taquitos? I do, the spicy taquitos. you all enjoyed the race for the first three quarters of it it was fantabulous but then Pizarro stuck up the show and got the win might have put himself back into the top ten in points for the first time this season congratulations to Tony Tim John Ryan and Rick we will see you at Chicago next week have a good day